Welcome to the 3D Printing Canada Longer LK1 Plus BL Touch installation video. The Longer LK1 Plus is an affordable and high quality large scale printer with a build volume of 400 by 400 by 500. It has a similar design language as its siblings, the LK1 and LK2. Like many large printers, it will benefit greatly from a BL Touch auto bed leveling sensor. Here's what we'll need to do that. You will need one genuine AntClabs BL Touch unit, a set of XD2000 extension cables, a 3D printed BL Touch bracket, some zip ties, a pair of clippers, a small Phillips type screwdriver, a set of Allen keys. You can either use the ones that came with your printer or we prefer to use these driver types instead. And finally, a soldering iron, a 1K 1 8 watt resistor, a piece of 1 8 diameter heat shrink tubing, and some solder. Let's begin with the BL Touch bracket assembly. Remove the BL Touch from its packaging. Open the included accessory bag and extract both screws and both nuts for the BL Touch. We won't be needing the extension cable included with the BL Touch, so you can very carefully wiggle this out of its connector. Orient the BL Touch as shown so that the connector faces the inside of the bracket. Then we can take our screws and screw the BL Touch into place with the nuts coming from the top. You can use the Phillips head screw to put a little pressure on the bottom and then thread the nut on by hand. Repeat the same step for the second screw. Moving to the front of the printer, before we mount the BL Touch, we have to plug in our new 2000 mm extension cable. Make sure the connector lines up with the grooves in the connector housing and very carefully push it in. Now we can remove the three screws holding on the fan shroud from the longer. To attach the BL Touch mount, start by screwing in the middle screw first as it's the least accessible. After that, you can screw in the other two. In order to properly route our wire, we have to remove the zip ties that come on the printer. Take your clippers and clip them off. We will be cleanly routing our 2000 mm extension cable through the pre-existing hosing that comes on the 3D printer. Disconnect the extruder cable assembly from the control box, then find the slit in the hosing where you can start fishing through your 2000 mm cable. Take your time for this process as it does take a while. After completing that step, we can reattach our extruder wiring assembly to the Bowden tube with zip ties. Notice that the BL Touch wire leading to the BL Touch has a little bit of slack. This is important as we don't want the wire to become disconnected if it gets tugged. Now we can start looking at the control box modifications. Start by removing the 10 M3 screws on the control box located on the back and sides. The top should just pop right off. Route your BL Touch wires through the hole in the back of the control box very carefully. It's time to do some soldering, so turn your iron on. The soldering required is very basic, so don't be afraid if you're not an expert. Due to the nature of the control board, we have to solder the resistor in line with the BL Touch extension wire with the brown, red, and orange cables. Grab the wires about 10 centimeters from the plug and then start to peel off the brown wire from the cable assembly using your fingernails. Repeat the same process and separate the orange wire from the red wire. We are going to splice the resistor between the orange wire and the red wire. So start by cutting the orange and red wire in half in the middle of the loop we just created. Remove the shielding from the ends of each orange and red wire. Now let's cut a length of heat shrink tubing that's long enough to cover the resistor and its wires. The next step is fairly straightforward. We are going to take both of our red wires that we cut and splice them together as shown, and then do the same with both of our orange wires. At this point, we should take our length of heat shrink tubing and put it over the red wires. 
Repeat the same process for the orange wires. Start integrating the resistor by wrapping the red wires around one side of the resistor wires. Repeat the same step for the orange wires. At this point, you can take your soldering iron and wick some solder into the joints. Slide your heat shrink tubing over the resistor and the wires. Make sure that no bare wire is exposed. You can use lighter or other hot source of air to very carefully shrink the heat shrink. Now we can plug our 3-pin cable into the port on the longer motherboard. Ensure that you orient the plug just as shown with the orange wire closest to the LCD ribbon cable. For our Z min end stop connector, we're going to have to modify the plug and turn it from a 3-pin to a 2-pin. Using your pair of clippers, put it inside the pin slot that's empty and clip the top and the bottom of the pin slot. Then you can clip off the rest and it should come off. Locate and unplug the cable on the motherboard that's labeled Z. From this orientation, it's located on the bottom left of that connector cluster. Plug your Z min connector in so that the white cable is facing the inside of the board. At this point, making sure there's adequate slack in the cables, use a zip tie to secure the cables properly so they're not going to move around too much inside that control box. Now we can reassemble our control box. Keep in mind that the BL Touch wires are a permanent fixture now, so be careful they don't get tangled. After putting the firmware on the SD card, when you first turn on the printer, you should be greeted by a green progress bar. You will notice that we now have a different control interface. This is more like traditional Marlin and not like the firmware that Longer sends with its printers. After it loads for the first time, turn the printer off, make sure you remove the SD card, then put it in your computer and make sure you delete the project.bin file. Do not delete the file labeled EEPROM. The EEPROM file stores all the settings for your printer. At this point, you should never start the printer without the SD card inserted. To print a file, put the G-code on your SD card, put it into your printer, and then you can turn it on. To start the calibration process, press the red select button on the very right-hand side, go to temperature, preheat PLA, then preheat PLA. You'll notice it sets the nozzle to 200 and the bed to 60. Wait for the printer to heat up properly. After that, let's go to Motion, then Auto Home. The printer should home using the BL Touch off to the side. After homing the printer, let's go to Motion, Move Axis, Move Z, Move by 10 millimeters, and then Move Z down to zero. To set the Z probe offset, let's put a piece of paper underneath the nozzle. Navigate up to the main menu again. Under Configuration, go to Probe Z Offset. At this point, you can start holding the negative button and you'll see the Probe Z Offset go into the negative values. While this is happening, move the paper back and forth slightly. The goal is to very lightly grip the paper between the nozzle and the bed. Not enough so that it can't move, but enough so that it's a little bit rough. After that, return to the configuration menu, and then scroll down and press store settings a couple times just to make sure. To print a file, scroll down to print from SD, then select your file. Make sure to follow the instructions on our GitHub page to ensure that your slicer is set up properly. If it is, you will see the printer probe the bed before every single print. The Longer LK1 Plus is a big, high-quality printer that doesn't require a big wallet from customers. Replacement parts are cheap and easy to find. It uses standard nozzle sizes, and the included bed works well out of the box. 
The BL Touch really brings this machine to the next level of ease of use, both for new customers and seasoned users who are looking for a greater accuracy and more consistent results. With this modification, you can print very large objects with the peace of mind that the first layer is going to be uniform and stick to the bed properly. Please see the links below for parts and purchase information. From the 3D Printing Canada team, we hope you enjoyed this guide.